But anyhow, it's great to be here today on this birthday time, and, and, and it is an exciting day for us, uh, really, and uh, this, uh, it's, been, it's been an amazing journey, 10 years, and watch, as Sharon was saying there, so many people have been touched, and we know that we've, you know, it's been great. It has been very, very good, and it's not over yet, and uh, it's exciting. So, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we come to you today, and we lift up our hearts, we lift up our voices, we lift up our praise, and... And Father, we're just asking you to, to come and, and, and have your way in this place, my God. Just move by your Spirit. And, and uh, Lord, all we want is you. We don't, we don't want anything else. We just want you to come in your own special way. And wherever you are, there's revival. Wherever you are, there's your presence, there's this healing, there's deliverance. And, and Father, I, I just pray this morning that you'll empower me to be able to bring this message, my God. I, I pray for the anointing. Pray for the anointing to help me. In Jesus' mighty name, and Father, I just give you all the praise, give you all the glory, and everybody says, Amen. Well, you know, I believe that we're, we're living in very, very interesting times, and uh, there's so many different thoughts going on, and, and uh, the COVID thing, there's people getting jabbed, people aren't getting jabbed, people, it doesn't really matter whether you're jabbed or not, the thing is whether you keep your eye on Jesus. Keep your eye on Jesus, and... Uh, allowing him to do what he wants to do in our life. And uh, it's, it affects a lot of people. It's affected a lot of churches. And there's a lot of people there that, uh, that today that aren't going anywhere. They're just sitting at home. And just adds to those numbers of people that used to say, I used to go to church. And we're believing for that revival wind to touch people. Amen? And uh, it doesn't touch much for the fan uh, of God to, to, to touch I was on a camping thing with my son recently and we had one of those little uh, uh, fire pits and, and the fire had gone out. And, uh, and I was looking at it and all I could see was uh, just old dead coals and uh, they looked dead to me anyhow. But Brett had one of those little uh, blowers. What do you call them? Those little things that you blow the, we the, the, the uh, leaves out with. And he, and he walked out with that, and he was, you know, he walked out, and he put it in there, and he blew the thing, and next minute this thing burst into flame. And you get a picture of that, because that's what God can do. The wind of the Spirit. Remember, on the day of Pentecost, there was an outpouring. There was a wind like a mighty rushing wind. And as that wind, I believe, as it blows, it's going to cause the coals in people's hearts to burst into flame again. Amen? And uh, all of a sudden, we had an amazing fire. We had a, an amazing thing. And today, let's, let's really concentrate on the things that are very, very important. We can get caught up in so many things, but I want to concentrate on Him. Amen? And, you know, what, one of the things that, that I've been thinking about a lot lately is that religion uh, majors on sin. Talk about sin. Try to get people to repent and Though repentance is a very, 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 I cannot express enough important word. If all we're talking about is sin, people become so sin conscious. But you see, I believe that spirit life majors on righteousness. What we've got to start to understand, I've been made righteous. Have you? I've been washed in the precious blood. Hallelujah. I'm no longer a slave to sin. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I've been changed by the glory. And God is changing us from glory to glory. He's changing us. And so I, I just pray today that, that as we go through these scriptures and, and perhaps we can just allow the Spirit of God to get a hold of us. You see, I am very, very convinced that it doesn't matter what church you go to. What really matters is, are you a child of God? Are, are you listening to what the Spirit of God is saying? Uh, is your focus on, on, on allowing God to get around your life? Is your focus on, on, on who He is and what He's done for us? Is His focus, is your focus on bringing worship to Him? God said, if I said about Jesus, He said, if, and Jesus said these words, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. There's something about the church, instead of trying to lift up global connections or, or some other denomination or whatever it might be, or some ministry or some particular gifting or whatever it is. We've got to lift up the name of Jesus. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to myself. And we want to lift him up today, amen? We want to lift up the name of Jesus. 
And the Bible says this in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3, and it says here in verse 4, it says, for when, for, one, for when one says, I am of Paul, or I am of Apollos, or I am of the Christian Outreach Center, or I am of the AOG, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul? Who is Apollos? But ministers through whom you believe, as the Lord gave to each one. I planted Apollos waters, but God gave the increase. So then, neither is he who plants, uh, so, sorry, so then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God gives the increase. It's all about him, amen. And you see, Paul also said these words over there in, in chapter 2. It says, And I, brethren, when I come to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God or the mystery of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I was with you in weakness and fear and much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith would not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So Father, that's what we want today. We want, we want to know the power of God. We want to know the wisdom of God. See, if we really understand this new creation man, this new species, a spirit being, a more than a conqueror, one that can do all things through Christ who gives the increase, amen. It's not by might, it's not by power, it's by my spirit. I want you to know this today. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the originator. He is the perfecter of our faith. That's what it says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. And I don't know whether you realize, realize it or not, but Jesus believes that you and I can do everything that he says you can do. He honestly believes that. You see, God is faith. And he believes that you can do everything that he's ever said that you can do. Some things that he says may seem to your natural mind impossible. Anybody ever had one of those moments? He asks us to lay hands on the sick. How, how silly does that sound to the natural mind to lay a hand on a sick person and they get healed? But how many people have seen it? How many people have experienced it? It happens, amen. This is what happens when people lay hands on the sick. But everything that Jesus asks you to do is doable. Everything that he wants you to do can be done, amen. And as you read the scriptures and you read as he talks to his disciples, and, and you know one of the things there that he said to his disciples one day, they run out of wine, and, and, and he just said to the boys, he said, okay, he said, see those water pots over there? And I don't know how many gallons, but 20-odd gallons in each pot. There were six of them. He said, fill them up with water. And then, then he said, take, take a bit out and then take it over to the master of the feast. To me, why would you want to do that? It's water. But when you can believe that whatever God asks you to do is doable, and everything that he asks you to do can be done, amen, because he's the God of the miracles. It's how we think that determines how we run our race. We're all running a race here. It's a race that, that, that we run, and, and you've got to run with endurance. You've got to run with, with passion. You've got to run with a, with a vision, with a dream. It's how we think that determines how you run that race. If you don't think you can win, you won't win. You've got to hit that field. And I, and I believe that coaches would, 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 would determine in, in people's minds that when they get on that field, even though it seems impossible, you can win. You can win if you really apply yourself. You've got to think, if God be for me, who can be against me? 
you put you indelibly print these things in in my in your mind if we think right negativity doubt and fear will never be able to invade your life again if we think right we've never really majored in our thinking on who we really are in Christ we major on many things what it means to have Jesus as the Lord of our lives. Can you just dwell on that? He's the Lord of my life. John said, he says, we are sons of God. We're born of God. He that is born of God overcomes the world. Are you born of God today? Are you born again? It's not just a matter of, uh, you know, coming to a, a meeting and, and going out the front and, and, you know, and going and having a sausage roll or something after the meeting and, and, and that's it. You, you, you get born again. You're born of God. God invades my life. John said it again. Let me say it again. We are the sons of God. Born of God. Amen. He that is born of God overcomes the world. That's us he's talking about, not somebody else. Yes, you and me. Sometimes I've got to grab hold of that with both hands and I've got to say, God, I've overcome the world. I, I've overcome every trial, every temptation, everything that comes against me. If I can only believe, all things are possible. Do you consciously think he's talking about you? Dare to believe what God says. Amen. 2 Corinthians 10.3, it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Strongholds are coming down. Do you believe that? False humility. Fear of being prideful. You see, when you're sin conscious, when you're conscious, and all, they, all we talk about is our flesh, and all you think about is your flesh, well, then you start to, all you look about is the pitfalls of the flesh. How many people know that there's a lot of pitfalls in the flesh? It's weak. It's, it's miserable. It's a big, terrible thing. And if you focus on that, then when, when God, we, you know, when you want to do something, false humility comes in. Where you start to say, oh, oh I'm not good enough to do that. I, I, I. No, God says that you're born of God you're children of God, and that you have overcome the world. Amen. And greater is he who's in you than he that's in the world. So if, if God says, I want you to do something, instead of let, letting false humility in the flesh say, oh, no, 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 I, I, you know, I, I couldn't do that. You've got to say, yes, amen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Fear of being prideful. If you're just conscious of flesh, Pride, you know pride, we hate pride. I don't want to be prideful, I just want to be humble. I just want to be, friend, people who are just humble with false humility and, and frightened of it, uh, that they might be prideful do nothing for God. They just sit there and, and eat humble pie and are not, they're lovely people, beautiful people, but God wants to raise up an army. I know we've got a football player here, but man, if that football player had the ball on his arm and said, excuse me, sir, I'm coming through. <laughs> Make way. <laughs> no, you got to, man, you got to grit your teeth. You're going to get a couple of smacks in the chops. You're going to get a few bruises. You're going to get a few things that's going to go wrong. But you've got to have that tenacity. You've got to push through. You've got to break through. See, lack of understanding of who we really are has stopped us from boldly declaring who we are in Christ. What we dare to confess about ourselves. You've got to dare to confess who I am in Christ. I've got to... I've got to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Am I doing it yet? No, I'm not. Am I at the goal line yet? No, I'm not. But I'm heading for it. Hallelujah. 
I'm heading for it and I'm pushing through and I'll, and I'll do whatever I can to break through. You see, it's wonderful to just stand up there and say, breakthrough is coming. Friend, breakthrough will never come unless you stand up and start to break through. We've got to break through, break through, break through. It's what we dare to confess about ourselves. We know who Christ is and what He's done at the cross of Calvary. Tom was sharing at a communion by dying a shameful death. And we can praise Him and worship Him and that's good. But what does that mean for me? What does that really mean for me? Jesus hanging on the cross said something so very, very powerful. He said, it is finished. And as we look at those words, it is finished, we've got to understand that here he is hanging naked on a cross with nails in his hands, nails in his feet. He's been abused. He's got a crown of thorns. He's been spat upon. He, he's done, he's copped He was pushing through. What was he pushing through for? He was pushing through for a breakthrough in humanity. What he was doing there as he was hanging there, and sometimes we, we just look and Jesus said, it is finished. So now we just go around and say, it's finished. Hallelujah. I don't have to do anything. Friend, Jesus was paying an ultimate price. The Bible says that on the cross, he could have called down 12 legions of angels. When he was hanging on the cross, there, there were thieves there that says, if you are the Son of God, get yourself off this cross and get us off as well. There were people there that were saying things. Satan came to Jesus and he said, hey, if, if you just bow down and worship me, I'll give you all these kingdoms as he, as he declared it to him. There's a lot of things that Jesus could have done. There's a lot of things that he could have done to save himself from what he was going through. But you see, what he was doing, he was fulfilling the demands and the law of the Abrahamic covenant. He was paying the price because, you see, your filthy sin and my filthy sin nailed him to that cross. And the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. And by rights, you and I had a death penalty on our lives. But Jesus, according to the Abrahamic covenant, but Jesus came and fulfilled the Abrahamic covenant and he died for you and me. But friend, that when he said it is finished, in reality, it wasn't finished. It was just the very beginning of a brand new covenant. Hallelujah. And it wasn't finished until he took his precious blood as he took that blood. But you see, before he even did that, he had to go into Hades itself. He was taken into Hades itself. And there he was tormented for three days and for three nights. The enemy would have had a field day with him. But I want to tell you, when he was hanging on the cross, when he was going through life, when he was going through persecution, when people falsely accused him, when he'd done all those things, instead of being like you and me, he wasn't a flesh man, he was a spirit man, and he didn't allow the flesh to rise up. But instead he said, you can have your day right now, but my day's coming, hallelujah. And on the third day I'm going to rise up and I'm going to slap you across the side of the head. I'm going to knock every tooth out of your head. I'm going to strip you naked. I'm going to take every bit of authority that you've ever had. I'm going to pull you down. You are finished, hallelujah. Jesus, he could have said, yes, it's going to happen there, or I will do this. But no, he said, I'm doing it for them. I'm doing it for them. My day's coming. My day's coming. He didn't allow the flesh to manifest. Sometimes we like the eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But he didn't allow that. He said, my day's coming. Jesus that died on the cross went into haze and he rose triumphant or his foes. He stripped Satan of his authority and he gave that authority back to you and me. He took his precious blood 
that dripped from his body. He took that blood and he took it into the throne room of God. He took it before the courts of heaven. He took it before all the magistrates and whoever else. I don't understand what it was, but he took it right into, the, into that very atmosphere and he presented his blood and he said, it is done. They are washed. They are cleansed. They are made whole. Hallelujah. They're mine. I bought them with a price. Jesus paid a tremendous price for you and me. Tremendous price. You see, your confession changes us. My confession changes me, for good or for bad. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. But what you, you confess, so is he. I, I don't want to confess that I'm a sinner. I was a sinner saved by grace, but now I'm a child of God. Hallelujah. That is in the past. There's nothing I can do about the past. It's in the past. Thank God it's in the past. God says he doesn't even remember it. But now I'm to press on. Now I'm going to have my mind fixed on him. Understand what he's done. That's my confession. God calls things that be not as though they are. Let the weak confess, I'm strong, amen? Confess you're strong today. I'm strong. Let the weak confess he's strong. Let the poor confess he's rich. Change from natural thinking. Don't think naturally. Think spirit. You see, you and I are carriers or containers of the mighty Holy Spirit. In reality, I'm not a mere man anymore. When in fact, I'm a partaker of God's divine nature. We've been speaking a little bit about this in the last few weeks. God imparted his nature into me. Can I tell you a part of God's nature is love, mercy, forgiveness. Next week, I'm going to preach on Breaking condemnation. Breaking condemnation over our lives. There's so many people today that live under condemnation. Past failures, past things. Anyway, I won't go on anymore. In reality, I passed from death to life. Eternity started for me the day I got born again. I will not die. I will never die. Hallelujah. I'll leave this body. Yes, thank goodness for that. But I'm a son of God. And if I'm a son of God, I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Think about this for a little moment. You see, we, we say things and we, drink, we, we, we sing them and things like that. But I am a son of God. And if I'm a son of God, I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. If that's true, I have a relationship with the Father just like Jesus had. I can come before him and I can talk to him. John 14, 23, Jesus said, If anyone loves me, listen to this, he will keep my word and my Father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. Listen, it's amazing. This is what Jesus said. If anyone loves me, how many people love Jesus? Give me a big wave if you love Jesus. He will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Does that mean that he will come and live in me? So everywhere I went, he would be with me? If he's made his home with me everywhere I go, he goes with me. He said, I'll never ever leave you. Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold hold you with, the, with my righteous right hand. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. 
I will strengthen you. Amen? Yes, I will help you. Anybody need a bit of help? <laughs> I will upheld you with my righteous right hand. This is all ours, declared before your enemies. God lives with me. He's, he's in me. Romans 8.11 says this, But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. The Spirit lives in you. He will give life. He will quicken your mortal bodies. That means He will heal it. Some people don't think they deserve to be healed. Some people don't know they should be healed. But you see, he said, I will quicken, I will make alive. That means he will heal it if it's sick, make it strong if it's weak, and reveal to you that you are a victor and an overcoming, our overcomer. Our confession, our believing is so important. God watches over his word to perform it, to fulfill it. We are citizens of a new covenant. Do you believe that today? Everything Jesus says you can have, they're yours. They're yours. Amen. Claim it. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift on the inside of you. Pick up again the mantle. Pick up the mantle. Where is the God of Elijah? Where is the God of Elijah? He's in you. He's in you now. He's in you now, amen. I don't know about you, but friend, I, I'm not, I'm, I might be preaching to the choir, but I'm preaching to me. And I want to grab hold of these, these things. I want to grab hold of my confession. I am a new creation. I'm a brand new man. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God says, I'll raise up a standard against him. God wants to come and be our source and our power. He wants, to, he wants to give us that life, life more abundantly, amen. So today, let's stand to our feet. Let's believe God today. Let's trust Him today. Let's, let's just let Him be God in our lives. Father, today we, we confess that You are a God. Lord, you, you broke the old covenant, the old... You, you, you're fulfilled it in every way. That's what you're doing as you're walking through this life. You are covering every aspect, every part of it, and you completed it. You paid the price in full. Then you delivered us out of the kingdom of darkness and you translated us into a brand new kingdom. I'm a brand new man. I am not sin conscious. I am God conscious. I am spirit of God conscious. I am righteousness conscious. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. God, help us to break free. Break out of negativity and failure. Why should I remind you about something that you've forgotten? Deliver us, Father, from this flesh. Let us be spirit men and women in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. This morning, if you're here, if God is speaking to you this morning, and you know that you want God to touch you, perhaps you've allowed that flesh thing to bring, bring you into a place where you don't think that God can use you. Stupid words like, I'm too old. Just remember Abraham and those guys were 85 and goodness knows what. Moses was an old man. Joshua was an old man. We talk about a Joshua generation like it's a young generation. No, it's a, it's a generation that knows God. It's got nothing to do with age. It's got everything to do with who you are. You might have felt that your days are, are over and now you're finished. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. If God's talking to you today and you, and you want to respond to God, would you just quickly slip up your hand this morning and say, God, I, I just want to come. Let the Spirit of God touch me. I pray that the cake's not the thing that's good. <laughs> Look, just, just quickly slip out the front. We'll pray with you this morning. Just quickly slip out the front. If that's you this morning, come on. 